sois ce Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, j'en suis à lui. Je choisis Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. Je choisis Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. Je choisis Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. En marchant dans les chemins, dans les rues, observant tous les... Nous You will guide us by your Holy Spirit, and all that all that will be said, may your kingdom come among us, and may your will be accomplished in our lives. Come and manifest yourself, because you're the one who gives life. Come and save again. Come and correct us and uh, bring us back on the right path of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, we have played and prayed. Amen. Nous allons lire dans Psalm 49. Psalm 49. It is written. To the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all in inhabitants of the world, bo both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of the heels surround me? And what is interested for us? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever. That he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit. For he sees wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish and of their posterity who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away, his glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lives, he blesses himself. For men will praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man, and the theme today, a man who is an honor, yet does not understand, is like the beasts that perish. 
A man who is in honor, yet does not understand, is like the beasts that perish. We want to ask ourselves this question today. Is man really intelligent? That's the question. And the conclusion is given in Psalm 49, the last verse, verse 20. A man who is in honor, yet does not understand, <coughs> is like the beasts that perish. When I say he doesn't have any intelligence, in general, men do not have intelligence because they, re th they resemble like beasts that we kill. Intelligence is what? It's the, the ability to understand things, to know things, the events, to understand the events, and to see the relationship uh, between uh, things and events. I'll give you an example. When someone has a kind of uh, herb in his uh, meal and then he brings the spoon to his mouth and his mouth grimaces an intelligent man beside him will understand uh, the relationship between the powder that was put in the food and the fact that that person uh, uh, made a, made a, a grimace. <coughs> These herbs must have been uh, bitter herbs. And a man who touches, who sees someone else touch uh, iron that was really hot and burns himself will not do the same. The first touched and it burnt his hands. I do not want to do the same thing because the same thing can happen to me. That is intelligence. It allows you to make a relationship between the events and things. But how do we explain that man becomes when we're talking about the most important things he, he can uh, he becomes unable to make the uh, relationship between these things it is written he is like the beasts that perish the beasts how are they you see you see a cow, and uh, cows are born together, they play together, they're in um, a field, and, um, and every month we kill one of them. But the, other one, the others live as if nothing is happening. They see that there's one that's not there anymore, but you won't see uh, a cow wanting to flee because it doesn't think uh, and uh, try to make a relationship between uh, the, the fact that the cow is gone and uh, what can happen to, to itself. Some cows are intelligent, but uh, man's science uh, is uh, superior to animals' uh, intelligence. But man wants to uh, build uh, cars and houses to uh, take care of his future. He does studies, he sto stocks food because he sees a relationship uh, between things and he is preparing in advance, but a cow does not realize these things. She thinks, uh, the cow thinks it's well, and there's even a, veter uh, a veterinarian that comes to visit and take care of its health. And the only reason the cow is there is to be eaten one day. <coughs> but that future, but the, the cow doesn't understand that. Animals that we kill, it's the same for sheep. We raise them, we, we bring them in the fields, they eat, they're happy, they're protected by 
uh, the, <coughs> the, the one who takes care of them uh, from um, all the wolves. And we're preparing them because we're going to kill them soon. <coughs> and this verse says uh, that uh, someone who is an honor and is applauded and we say, oh, he's so strong and beautiful, she's so beautiful, she's so intelligent, she has succeeded her life, but it is written, if that person is not intelligent, God does not consider our abilities to build, to plan, um, like a real intelligence. Spiritually, uh, this is not intelligence. Humanly it is, but spiritually it isn't. <coughs> spiritually, man is dead because he behaves like an animal, spiritually. He does not think, he only thinks about uh, taking care of his uh, uh, retirement, uh, to study, to have a good job, that he will think about. But when, it, when you talk about uh, uh, eternal life, he does not uh, think about that. He's like an animal. He lets himself be uh, fattened by the world. This is what this text is telling us. It is written in verse 7, None of them can by any means redeem uh, a, the, his brother for, nor give to God a ransom for them. Despite all his riches, man cannot buy his life. So when death will come, he cannot avoid it. There are people who succeed in every area. They have children, they're married, their children are all well settled. But this not, that does not give you life. One day they're going to die. And the text says, verse 11, their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their land their own names. Nevertheless, man, though it's honor, does not remain. At the end, man dies, he's like a mosquito, like a fly. He dies like a, uh, like a bug, <laughs> and he has no solution. But why doesn't he think about having a solution? This psalm, it calls people, they're, they're, they're senseless because they're not thinking about their future. They can't see what the end is going to be for them. They're like, they're like animals. It is written. The wise die and the senseless also. A druggie dies. A, a rich man dies also. A crazy person dies. A president dies also. So what was the use of being a president? Well, he had a good life. But this good life, if it has, if it has to end like that, it, what, was it, what was it worth? The years go by. They're not like treasures in our pocket. You know, money and gold, you can accumulate them. And it will be in your bank account. But the years that go by, they're past. You cannot, you can't bring them back to make you uh, younger. You are closer to death tired and you cannot call back the years uh, that are behind just to make you younger they cannot buy back their soul you cannot uh, call back those years they're already finished and someone who has uh, accumulated 10 million dollars in his uh, in his bank account so so when he has no more money at home he can go to the bank and get the money and when we know that when we get older we're, we're going towards death we're just everything it perishes slowly despite the riches and the intelligence that we may have
and the writer in the Bible. He says, how come man doesn't understand? It's so evident. Where is intelligence? Man is like a beast. He lets himself fat be fattened by life. He lives. He forgets that one day he will die. Why doesn't he reflect on this to find a solution? That's the problem. Men repeat the same mistakes as their predecessors. So where's the intelligence? The real intelligence, as we said, finds relationships uh, between things and prepares uh, solutions. That's intelligence. You saw your father. He was a drunkard. How he lived. You saw your father. He was a, poly a polygamous person, and you saw you saw how he ended. You saw your cousin, your uncle. They were uh, robbers, and you saw how they ended. Mesrin, the number one public enemy in uh, Jacques Mesrin, he was uh, he defied uh, the French police and police. How did he end? In his car, he was full of bullets because all the police uh, surrounded him. So we will always find people uh, that they want to do like Misrin. And he finished in, in that state. We'll, we'll find people to, who will continue to uh, love money and worship it and uh, collecting it. And they have big bank accounts and they want to buy their life. But all that does not make us think. Someone told us a story yesterday. There was a man, he was so much in love with his money that he made uh, his ask to his wife to sign and to, to sign a paper that he, could, that he leave and die with all his money. And, and the witness told his wife, did you honor uh, the, def the deceased person? Yes, I honored this. Uh, yes, I made him a check. She said, <laughs> what's he going to do with it under the ground? That, uh, yeah. What? How can he touch that money? So man has a problem. He does not understand. The things are evident. We saw how anger brought a lot of people to do stupid, stupid things. But people will continue to act in a senseless way. They do not learn lessons from the past. In Europe, there was a time, there was a time when there was a, a war of a hundred years, and despite that, people kept go doing war. People keep arming themselves. How many governments have not changed? But the problems continue, and <coughs> man doesn't think. So finally, there is no solution. Let's look uh, other in another way. No, they continue to do the same uh, things, the same elections, the same campaigns, um, presidential campaigns. Everything repeats itself. And in the past, we saw that it was uh, uh, it failed. <clears throat> when uh, when a system has failed for a long time, we have to think about doing something in another, another way. But men continue doing things the same way. That's the behavior of animals. They do the same thing for millions of years, for, for many years, because he's got a small intelligence. Someone told me that now we can catch uh, monkeys and uh, by putting a banana in this trap and when he puts his hand in there and his hand is caught by the banana and he closes his hand on the banana so then when we hold something so the, the volume of our hand is bigger so he can't get his hand out but if he leaves the banana he can take his hand out so why the reason so he doesn't want to leave the banana and, and, and we will find the, the, the monkey and we will take the monkey. That's the behavior of an animal.
So he's going to leave his life. So he's going to lose his life because of a banana. And man is supposed to be more intelligent to understand that it, he that he can find a banana somewhere else. But but man makes the same mistake. He, he sees his predecessors how they finish, and he does the same mistakes. There are great magicians. There's one here in Normandy, uh, Mr. Royer. He was a great uh, uh, magician. He died at 69 years old. Even the so even a magician, he dies. So the minister used to go and consult him. Someone that you're consulting so that you may live a long time to avoid dangers. And he dies before you. So think, no, they'll just go see another medium. And man doesn't think. I remember uh, the testimony of a musician uh, who became a Christian. He, he, he was thinking, um, he went to see a fetisher uh, to have uh, power, magical powers, to attract people at his concerts. When they were going to the fetisher, he considered like a god. When they went to the musician, uh, they had uh, uh, a really great success in all the country. So they understood that that man was powerful. And what he did not understand is that one, at one point he was not he was not having full stadiums anymore. They said, "We'll go renew at the same fetisher," and they were on their way a few kilometers from there, and they see they see a car in the opposite uh, direction, and they stopped the car. It was coming real fast. Oh, now we're bringing the fetisher to the hospital. He's got a bad fever. The, the fetisher is sick. Yeah. So he was surprised. For, for him, he thought the, the fetisher was uh, powerful. He that, he, was, he could not become sick, and he did. And and they told him, well, wait for him uh, there. Uh, tomorrow he'll probably be back. And the next day, and then the next day they told him the fetisher was dead. Oh, a fetisher that dies. Yeah, he's like all men. That's when the, ref uh, the, the reflecting on things should start. And who do I trust? So he trusted in this uh, fetish, that person that I used to think was almighty, that magician, the great dictator, the great president, he's dead. That president, that magician. So the solution is not there. Because after all, after all these years, we don't have the strength of those years. It's like, like we lost them. It's like, it's like as if we did not even live them. When you're very hungry, do you remember the, the good meals of the past and that satisfies you? No. You're very hungry. Oh, I'm going to re uh, just uh, reminisce on these past uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken I used to, to, to eat. You might remember that. It's like a picture that you're looking at. It's not going to make your situation worse. Because it's that. Because it's that way. The real problem is not... Uh, that. It's not what I have as riches. The real problem it's my eternal life. If, if I can live eternally with riches, with the joy and peace, ah, that's worth making efforts for that reason. But today, everything that you may have will pass one day, uh, especially the day you die. Some people die rich. It's false. They don't die rich. They die with big bank accounts, with a lot of goods. But then, when they die, they have nothing because they're going to be buried by themselves. Because of this, we must uh, consider the solution. You're not going to be a millionaire. 
and later die like an animal, like a fly. Intelligence asks us to consider this situation. The same intelligence that invented cars, uh, uh, the plane because of uh, transportation problems. That intelligence that brought us to make medications, uh, to heal uh, illnesses, the microscope, to see the little things. That intelligence will bring us to consider, consider the solution for death because all these things that we're talking about are, are less dangerous than death. All these things are less important than death. Even if you're, you, you can beat the, the, the germ today or hunger, one day you're going to die anyway. So the real problem is that. Everything else is secondary. It doesn't mean that they're not problems, but they're secondary. But how can this intelligence that makes us consider to other things doesn't bring us to think about the essential? We become like animals. Man is like an animal. We see the youth. Look, look how they end, those who, who did not believe in God, those youth that refused to go to school, this, these youth. And we see people repeat these situations. Man has to be more intelligent than that. I believe that after after talking a bit, if we reread the Psalm 49, we will under, understand that other ways, in another way. Let's start with verse 6. Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever, that he should continue to live eternally, and not see the pit. They will not avoid death, eh? for he sees wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their house will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. That's what it says. He doesn't last. So he's like these beasts that perish. The one who raises animals, the farmer who takes care of the animals, he takes care of them to, to kill them after. The world takes care of you today uh, at every level. But at the end of all that is that uh, the farmer, the, the one that we call death, he will get you. Everything that's happening will bring us to death like animals that are in a field and one by one all will disappear their friends their companions and the animal does not think about anything as long as we give him his food the, and brush the, the animal he doesn't think about anything he doesn't even consider these things and man and man sees what's happening we have seen dictators were born under a dictatorship. We grew up, and but one day that man died. And that president used to say, we will not call me fire president, ex-president. We will call me fire president. He will die in power. He will remain in power until his death so that when he dies, we will call him fire president. 
But that man, he left the power as he was living, and he was called ex-president. So when we see all this, people who were giants like Hitler, like Stalin, giants like Marilyn Monroe, like actors of all types, when you see these people die, and it should make us uh, consider things. When we see Michael Jackson die, so he had a mask to, to breathe, to not have impure air. He made presidents cry. When Michael Jackson came somewhere, everybody was trembling. And starting by all the actors and singers themselves. So we are all singers and, and we're still applauding. Well, where is he today? When, when we see that, let's, let's think. Why? Why live for earthly things? Because, uh, because it's going to end like that. Why do we make magical contracts when it's going to finish wrong? You finish dead. It is written, Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He, life is short. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish. And the, of their posterity who approve their sayings. Beloved, it goes very quickly. Very quickly. Soon it will be in two years the presidential elections. I saw a documentary with Marc Hero. Uh, he is in Nantes, first the Prime Minister for two years in Nantes. He, he found his uh, office as a deputy, his old camping car. You know, we didn't wait one week. He left a Matignon today. He lives in Nantes the next day. The same day he arrived in Nantes, and the next day he saw two big trucks uh, that were uh, moving trucks, things that he had forgotten, things that he had forgotten in Matignon. And we sent all these things to his friend uh, who was now in power. They didn't, they didn't wait three or more days. The next day, the man almost cried. That's the existence of man. Is that what we want? To finish, always finish in death like that? No. A normal man must uh, reflect on things. He must say, there is a problem. I don't want to end up like this. We have to find a solution concerning the problem with death. I must find intelligence. I must be serious. I don't want to resemble an animal. Who would want to be? Who would want to be compared to a dog or a cow? Nobody. But we, if we have this dignity, if we have the dignity of being a human being, let's behave as a human being. Let's consider the problem of death. Man has this faculty to be able to uh, consider and prepare. If not, it's an animal. He lives like everyone. He sees everyone dying around him. He sees the rich die. The animals die. And he also, he doesn't think, no, there's a problem. And you repeat the same mistakes as your predecessors. That's why in the world we say, 
like mother, like daughter, like father, like son, because people repeat the same mistakes. But intelligence would want that by seeing the failure of one person, you say, oh, no, I will not do the same things. When we were little and our parents were polygamous, we suffered, our mothers suffered. There were difficulties in the family because of this. We did not see the father. And today, we find people of our own generation, our age, who, who do the same thing. They're polygamous also. We say, this is, this is silly. This man was crying because his father was making his mother suffer. He would cry. He was angry with his father. He hated his father. And today, he becomes a father and he does the same thing. Is that intelligence? It's like, it's like an animal. He does the same thing. Calmly. We saw some people die of ca uh, lung cancer because of the cigarette. People will see and repeat the same thing. Is that intelligence? No, it isn't. You take the pack of cigarettes and, it's, and it says smoking kills and you're a doctor and you smoke. Where is the intelligence? Where is the intelligence? There is no more intelligence. Man is like an animal because, because of the work of Satan. We will reread uh, Psalm 49, verse 14. This is the way of those who are foolish and their posterity who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in their mourning and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive in him. That's why we believe in God, because he has dealt with the problem of death. That's the reason, the essential reason. He dealt with the situation uh, concerning death. He will bring us to heaven after our death. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For everything that we have here will pass one day. You will not have, uh, you will not have the same desires as the, in the past. Today, uh, someday, you will, you will not feel like doing any of those things. Unable to utilize these last, uh, these past successes. Some people were great boxers, great cyclists, Bernard Hino, five times. He did the Tour of France, he won the Tour de France. But he said that since he left, and since then he has not gone on a bicycle anymore. And when you see him, you can't, when you see him, you don't, you can't believe that he won. You can't take those past years when he was strong. To, it's finished. He cannot buy that again. Only one person can buy that back. It's Jesus. By the power of the resurrection, he can give you a new life. That's why we chose him. It is written in verse 17, Do not be afraid when one becomes rich. I see some people that are bothered when you see some people get rich. No, their sadness is greater when death is approaching. But if you're rich for heaven, your joy is greater be even if death is approaching, because you know you're going to uh, find your riches that God reserved for you in heaven. Verse 17, do not be afraid when one becomes rich for the glory of his house is increased. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lives, he blesses himself. For men will praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. 
a man who is an honor yet does not understand, the one who seems beautiful and rich and intelligent and attracts everyone, the man who is an honor yet does not understand, is like the beasts, the one who doesn't deal with the problem of death, does, doesn't deal with the problem of eternal life. He has no intelligence. He is like uh, the beasts that perish. So we're feeding him to bring him to the place where we kill the animals. It's to bring him to that place. Yesterday, we ate a big chicken. But the chicken, when, when he was eating, uh, when it was eating uh, its uh, seeds, he wasn't thinking about the fact that he was going to die. So when he was, <laughs> when he thought he was, it was so smart. Death was uh, saying, was uh, waiting for it. Continue to be proud. Continue to exaggerate with your makeup. And death says, I even eat makeup. <laughs> so death is waiting. Continue to. To, to pretend that you're the most intelligent man. Death, death says it eats all that. The true intelligence is to think about the situation with death. Some people say, but there's so many religions. No, the question is not religion. The question is, in you there must be an intelligent functioning that will push you to consider about the situation of death. Because when you think about death, you're, you're going to think about where you come from. Death is as mysterious as where you come from your origin and from there the one who's at the origin of all this tell me where do we come from and where are we going i want the solution for the problem of death i want the solution because it's uh, disgusting to think about everything that we live, good good food and good and the beautiful sun and everything, and it's all going to end one day. It's disgusting. We want a place where the sun will never end and will never stop shining. You say that in your room. You talk to your creator. He will answer. He has already given us the answer. And if you don't want to listen to the answer, he will answer you. How can people get to that point? In 2 Corinthians 4, two Corinthians 4, Verse 3, but even if our gospel, the gospel is the good news that is the solution about evil and death, the, uh, the gospel of Jesus, but even if our gospel is veil veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. That scripture, it says that those people are blinded, we cannot understand, those who plan, a plan everything and they build uh, all kinds of things, how come that type of person cannot think about the most important problem about his existence? The, the, because he's veiled, because man is in pride, so Satan can add another veil and man cannot even think about these things T today. May that veil be torn, that you may come uh, go into yourself and say, is this life that I'm living will bring me somewhere? Where will it bring me? Where will it bring me? Consider it. Consider this. We remember 
of someone who is a vigil. These little people that come and they're impolite and they bother us. He, he came and, and slapped them and the, the youth died and you're there. A woman, you have children. The, these youth are crazy. And that person insult, insults you and another day he... he and, and, and one day uh, you, you slap that person and that's it. The youth was slapped and died. And we don't even think about our consequences. You say, I can deal that situation, but it can turn bad already when you have that type of situ uh, position. And you're, you're fired and you have a family. And man has to think about this. But when sin is there, man doesn't think. He lives in a system of evil. He doesn't think. He's got, he's got this anger that's just guiding him. And he does anything. And the consequences are bad. And the big problem is death. What position to take? and the ways that you're following right now and the projects in which you are the situation in which you're living well, where will it bring you maybe it might bring you to have aids it might bring you to prison and finish really in a bad way and might bring it to suicide full of problems you're following your present God gave man intelligence so that man can be hungry today and eat better tomorrow but the animal when he has today it's just today that's all it and you're living like an animal you're just considering today a man can when he studies he can accept to suffer five or six years without salary working late at night and others study and others are playing around and you're studying because you're preparing your, your future that's intelligence but the animal doesn't do that he doesn't do studies he's gonna look for what he's gonna eat today that's the animal so you're in a situation and it's only the present that you're considering now that makes you foolish a real man thinks about his future, what I'm doing now, where will it bring me? That's man who is intelligent. Where will it bring me? But man who is foolish and who is like the animal, he just wants to take advantage now. Right now I need this, right now I need Right now I'm strong, I'm beautiful whatever. You're, you imagine that there are people? I give an example. A man is, is in a job and he's paid 400 euros per month and then he will steal uh, some object that's 200 years and he lost his job uh, because he wanted something that was worth 200 euros. Where's the intelligence? Sin makes us uh, foolish. It's, there's a veil there that gets in front. Romans 1. Intelligence uh, is a uh, uh, blinding. Blinded. Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhood so that they are without excuse but because although they knew God they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened 
professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and uh, birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who, ch who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Man is serving the creation. He's serving money, uh, serving material goods. He's serving food. He's serving his own life instead of serving the one who's at the origin of everything. And it brings him to all kind of stupidity, th stupid things. And even in the Christian circles, men repeat the same mistakes. There's a man who spent his time preaching all the time that God is giving us the kingdom, God is giving us money, God is giving us everything, and he died in a, in a, plane, a plane accident. A little plain accident. And that that God that gives you the kingdom didn't show you that? And, and people say, and people invent all, uh, that God had warned him that, and God had warned him that he would die with his wife and his son also? No. He must not look for money. He must seek the kingdom of God. These preachers that ask you to seek money are, are crooks. Look at the end of them. They always finish wrong. We must seek, seek the solution, which is heaven, the kingdom of God. And it is written, what is beautiful, that God takes care of the rest. He doesn't ask us to just look for the kingdom of God. He adds, he says, ah, he'll take care of the rest. He says, the kingdom, the, guy, the, guy had, the man had his own private plane. And when you go to the conference, you have to pay. The Christians that pay money for for conferences where we preach, do you read the Bible? It says you receive free, freely, give freely. Or you pay because you hope that one day you're going to do things and you, you will be paid also. The problem is that we know the end of all these people who get rich like that on the on the backs of others and they finish badly. But there are other people who will repeat these things. Where is intelligence? Intelligence really blinds uh, people. And that's it's a scripture we just read in verse 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You know, even if you have big eyes, if you're in, dark, in the dark, you don't see anything. But this is worse, because we say, in another version, their intelligence that is already darkened is already plunged in darkness even more. And these people are in all kinds of problems. Their hearts without intelligence. Their hearts are foolish. And they were plunged in darkness. This is what we see left and right. We see people repeat the same problems in drugs already that they're without intelligence and they're plunged in darkness we have to come out of these things even in Christian circles we have to come out of the we have to come out of this logic of materialism and we're seeking money and goods we have to seek the glory of heaven God can give us a true life and he'll take care of the rest on earth now, some people say, well, I do evil because something is uh, bigger than me. It's pushing me to do these things. I can understand what you're saying, mister, but what to do? It's my body that's like that. It's, it's my heart that's like that. But you're not the first one. In Romans 7, it's written, Romans 7, 
15. Verse 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. So that's your speech. You're saying the same thing. You understand that what I'm saying is true, but there's another reality. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. So when you're in sin, you're doing your system. There are times of lucidity where you're saying, that's, I'm on the wrong path. But there's a, a power in you that, that, that's uh, beyond your, your control. And you, and you fall again. I do not do. You would like to be like God wants. You would have liked to be able to reflect like God wants. But, verse 16, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law with that it is good. The principles of God are good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, not, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present within me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the, this body of death? Some will say that. I understand that it's not good to be in sin. It's not good to serve the world. It's not good to serve money. But it's good to be uh, in peace with God and agreeable with God and to seek uh, eternal life. I understand that. But, but you know, I have these uh, impulses. It's, uh, it's hard to resist. I have these needs to, to do these evil things. I'm sad. That's why these people finish by drinking and by taking drugs, because they're not happy. In themselves, they, they know it's not the right path. But they let go, <laughs> and they just uh, they just uh, let go, and they do these evil things. They allow themselves. Intelligence is what I've never seen somebody say, like in France. Oh, I have a headache. I have a sore tooth. Oh, I have no choice. I'll stay like that. No, I will ask, I will call SOS uh, Médecin, I'll go to emergency. Today, you have to call SOS doctor. There are emergencies that we call uh, uh, eternal emergencies. The emergency center given by the Son of God in John 6, 37, he said, I will not reject anyone who comes to me from the Father. He knows your problem. He knows that you want to do right, but you can't. I'm not talking to those who they have chosen to remain like animals and to continue in evil. I'm talking to those who are saying, we want, but we feel attracted by evil. We understood, we understand. But you can't remain like that. <coughs> you have to cry out for help. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Jesus said, come to me, all you are tired and heavy laden. And we will finish. Verse 24. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Who will deliver me from pride, from anger? Some people, they know that they have not reacted right. They spoke in anger. And they say, what can I do for that anger will leave? 
one, for, one time for all, once and for all. And after they do bad things with, evil, uh, with, with anger, they say, oh, I've done stupid things again. I'm so miserable. After I've taken coke, cocaine, the person says, oh, I've, I, you know, I've fallen again. If someone would have been able to help me before, I'm so miserable. Some people that they feel that the way of Satan in them is not the right path. So they're, but they're still in it. Oh, miserable, a miserable man. Who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It means thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for, for sending Jesus. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with my, the flesh, the law of sin. The last answer. You know, before there were no chapters, so the, con the text continues. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So Jesus made a miracle, which is called new birth. He came to inhabit all those who believe in him, to give them victory over sin and on evil and on all these uh, passions that we have. Don't worry, all these lusts. And John 16.33 says, don't worry, I conquered the... Uh, John 16.33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. It will not be easy in the world. With everything that are around us, surrounding us, all these temptations, there will be tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So, because he has conquered the world, he has overcome. He will inhabit all those who believe in him to give them eternal life. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. It's what we call new birth. So you have no more argument to say, I can't do it. You need to just invite Jesus Christ in your life. And things will change. That's the mission that God gave us. He gave us the mission to open eyes of humans so that they may, uh, you know, so that they may see God. And my friend Paul, in Acts 26, Acts 26, verse Verse 19. Verse 17. I will, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as, as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. We just read a scripture that said the intelligence of these people were plunged in darkness, but God sent his word so that people come out of this darkness and come to the light of God. This is what is written. I will to you. Oh, and from power uh, from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me Amen. All these problems, like you sinned too much in the past, you will receive the forgiveness by Jesus Christ. All these problems, as that your flesh is too strong, you will receive Jesus. You will be stronger than sin. And it's called new birth. He sent his servants to open the eyes of the, the people of the, earth, uh, of the world. 
It's finished now, the uh, slavery of Satan. Now you can decide. We cannot accuse your body anymore, nor Satan. The decision is in your hands because our Savior of our souls has come down on earth to free the captives. When he comes, he, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has given me the power to liberate the captives. But there's a choice to make. You need to choose God, to choose to live like God wants you to. And God will take care to give you he will take care of you and give you the, the strength and the joy and the peace and the, and the joy of doing all that, of living eternal life according to his uh, commandments. This is what is left for you to do. Just choose Jesus and let God live through you. You can call yourself Christian, but have you really chosen God? Have, is it God who's directing your life or you listened uh, to teachings on prosperity and on a human richness God said to seek the kingdom of God seek that God is to be your king that's what you should be seeking and you will taste like it's written in another scripture taste and see how much God is good and you will not be able to live without him anymore like Joshua who remained in the temple even if Moses uh, he, he wasn't in the temple he stayed in the tent even if Moses was gone and that man was delivered from 5,000 demons and he stayed close to Jesus you will not want to leave Jesus because you will understand Understand that there's a power that is above money, a power over money and the pleasures of this world. It's the power of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Today, He has visited you to speak to you, and things can change. Lord, may your spirit uh, rip from the, uh, the darkness all those that you wanted to take out of darkness. We'll read Luke 15. The passage du salut. The scripture on salvation. He, dit encore, he said, fils, a man, then père, la part de bien he said to a certain man who had two sons, and, and the younger of them Dieu. said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired ha servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And the, he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring, our, bring him the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again and it was you're like dead today and you know it 
And he was lost and he is found. And they began to be married. to the, all those who are ripped from the darkness and of his evil hands and we will pray that a new life start for them. If you are there and you have realized that God is coming to free you, come, come forward to receive Jesus in your life as Savior and Lord, and walk definitely with him. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for the souls that you have taken out of darkness. We believe in your power. The, the chains of Satan are uh, fallen in the name of Jesus Christ. There is not, nothing to hesitate. God is calling you. You know, it's the offer of salvation. Yeah. 
Say like me, Lord Jesus, today I will trust you. I ask you to rip me, tear me totally from the claws of Satan through the new birth by the fullness of the Holy Spirit, by your blood that purifies. Forgive my sins. Et que je commence and une may vie I start a new life dans la victoire totale, and a total victory avec ton with your spirit. Merci, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Merci, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tel que je, ton grand amour, ton grand amour à toi. J'ai choisi Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. J'ai choisi Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi. Je suis à lui, j'ai choisi Jésus pour guider ma vie. 